Well, hello there. My name is Jan Burt, and this is my podcast, The Burt Not Ernie Show, where we talk about God's promises and the hope those promises bring to our everyday lives. Whenever I meet somebody new, I introduce myself as Jan Burt and say, like Burt and Ernie, since it's easy to confuse my last name with a different one. And almost always, people smile when they think of Burt and Ernie. That got me thinking. I'm a Burt, and I'm not an Ernie. But how often do we live as if we're someone God never meant for us to be? Part of knowing who you are is knowing who you're not. Hence the name, The Burt Not Ernie Show. I'm so glad you're here. Let's dig into God's promises. Well, hey there. Hello to you today. My name is Jan L. Burt. That's middle initial L, like just the letter L, last name Burt, B-U-R-T. I'm the host of this show, and I also host another podcast, The Prayer Podcast with Jan L. Burt. I'm so thankful that you're joining me today for episode number 177. And uh, it's kind of a cool little thing as I glanced at my notes and uh, realized that we're on episode 177. And the verse we're looking at today is Nahum 1. 7, chapter 1, verse 7, and then Psalm 117. So I feel like there's like all these ones and sevens, episode 177, Nahum 17, Psalm 117. It's kind of cool. I love it when God does stuff like that. So really, it's it's going to be a good day, right? It's going to be a good day. Anytime I see the number seven, and I know that God's number is seven, the number of completion of fulfillment, that's like his perfect number. It is perfection. Like it is good. It is finished. That's a good reminder to me, and I'm not into numerology or any of that kind of stuff because that's kind of like hippy dippy baloney. That is not my deal, and that's not what I'm saying. But biblically, we do know that seven is like the number of completion. It's it's just God's chosen number as like that's a good number. And so I see all these sevens today, and I think, well, thank you, Jesus. What a good reminder for me as I get ready to record this episode, that just you are just so good that what you start, you finish. He is the God of completion. Did anybody else need that reminder today that our God finishes what he starts? He doesn't leave anything halfway done, partially done. He doesn't abandon the works of his hands. That's you and I. He doesn't just go, yeah, well, you know, I've done enough with Jan. I just can't, you know, I'm bored of that little project. You know, isn't it great that we're not projects, that we are children of the Most High God. First John tells us that if you are in Christ, you are children of your Father in heaven. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So that's kind of a side note, a bit of a long introduction, but it's worth, it's just worth it. It's worth a few minutes just to remember who we are in Christ. And that is part of what I want to do on the Burt Not Ernie Show, help you remember who you are and also to know who you're not because the devil is, he is a liar and he's always telling you things that are not true about yourself, about your circumstances, about just anything. He just lies. It's his native tongue and he's a liar and we don't want to listen to the lies of a liar and we certainly don't want to let those be the loudest voice that we hear. And so know who you are, know who you're not. You are one that God loves so much, and in in the work that he's begun in you and through you, he's going to finish it. And every promise that he's made, yeah, yeah, he's going to keep it because he's a perfect promise maker and a perfect promise keeper. So thanks for listening today to the Burt Not Ernie Show podcast, to episode number 177, and I'm going to jump right in and read Nahum 1, verse 7. First, I'm going to read it from the Amplified Classic Edition, and then I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. The Lord is good. All right, let's make note of that right off the bat. The Lord is good. That's present day. That's in this exact moment. You may feel like, man, nothing in my life is good right now. I am just running into things and I've got all these hurdles. But you know what? The Lord is good. He is good. You can count on that. When everything else seems like it's anything but good, your God, the Lord, is good. The Lord is good, a strength and stronghold in the day of trouble. In the Amplified Classic Edition, strength and stronghold are capitalized. We can think of those as names. These are more than just adjectives. This is who he is. He's your strength. He's your stronghold in the day of trouble. He is good. He is your strength. He is your stronghold in the day of trouble. If that sounds a little bit preachy, and I'm just saying that on repeat, it's because it needs to be repeated. 
this is hugely important for us to understand. Not the Lord was good. Not the Lord will be good. Not the Lord sometimes is good. Not the Lord maybe, I hope, I hope so, might be good. The Lord is good. He is a strength, capital S. Like he's so strong, it's his name and a stronghold. Your stronghold. What happens if you are in the day of trouble? You find yourself in the day of trouble and you run to a stronghold. Think Old Testament here. You're safe within those those the walls of that city stronghold, or you know it might be a stronghold in the wilderness. Think of David, um, you know, and his men, and they had a stronghold. You could be like you've got the high ground. Listen, that's what God is for you in the day of trouble, a strength and a stronghold. And the rest of the verse says this, he knows, recognizes, has knowledge of, and understands those who take refuge and trust in him. So what is our role in all of this? Well, I think we need to, we need to understand that he is who he says he is. How do I know if he knows me? How do I know that he knows me? that I'm not just one in a sea of faces, that he actually knows me. How do I know the Lord is going to be good to me, a strength and a stronghold in the day of trouble, in this hour of trouble for me? Here's how I can know whether or not I'm going to have like the fulfillment of this promise. Am I taking refuge in him and am I trusting in him? That might sound like, well, that's hard to do. You don't know what's going on in my life, Jan. Well, I know what's going on in mine. And I'll tell you what, I have to just keep going back to him and saying, Lord, Your word is the truest thing that there is. Your word will endure forever. Everything else is going to burn up. It's going to be toasted and roasted. His word will endure forever. So I have to remind myself, okay, that's why I take refuge in him and trust in him. Because what he has promised me here is the truest thing that there is. It's the realest thing that there is. My greatest reality is the truth of the word of God. He knows, recognizes, has knowledge of, and understands me when I take refuge in him and trust in him. Join me on this journey of continuing to day by day, take refuge in and trust in our God because he is good. The Lord is good. He is a safe place to go to in times of trouble. I need a safe place to go in times of trouble. I don't need a semi-safe place. I don't need a place where I have, I'm have. i completely uncertain. Is it even safe here? I don't need a dangerous place. I don't need a risky place. Guess what? In the Lord, I have a safe place to go in times of trouble, and so do you. He takes care of those who trust him. If we trust him, he takes care of us. This is just a flat-out promise, my friend. Do you trust him? Do you trust him? Make the choice. I'm not telling you that you have to like, I don't totally feel like I trust him and I'm still and I'm still a little nervous about this situation. I don't know how it's all going to work out. I'm not saying get everything in order and then you come to him and say, okay, now I'm trusting you. I'm saying trust him now, right where you're at. I'm nervous about this situation, but I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you. I tell you what, you start speaking the word of God out loud over your situation. You start praying your prayers about your tricky spot that you're in. Pray them based on God's promises, based on what the word of God says. The word of God that Jesus said will endure forever. That's a long time. That is forever. It's forever. It's a long time, longer than anything else. You start praying based on God's promises, and you're going to find that your trust in him skyrockets. The quickest way to get from I'm nervous and shaky and afraid to I'm fully trusting God is to just begin to read and speak and pray God's word. And I mean it. Read it. Say it out loud. Pray it. Pray it out loud. You will. That's the quickest way. There's there's not a shorter route. It may be a million miles from where you are to fully trusting God, and you can get there in five seconds if you really will just say, okay, this is for me. The Lord is good. He's good to me. He is my strength and my stronghold in my day of trouble. He knows me. He recognizes me. He has knowledge of me. He understands me. And I take refuge in him and I trust in him. He takes care of those who trust him. So just get about the business of trusting. And the more you trust, the more you will trust. I hope that makes some kind of sense. I'm going to say it again. The more you trust him, the more you're going to trust him and then trust him even more. It just grows and it's exponential. And I'm really not exaggerating when I say that you can get across that million mile span of fearfulness and the reality of this is overwhelming me to fully trusting him in like a matter of seconds. 
if you just really go to the word and believe it and say it out loud, preach the gospel to yourself. The Lord is good. He protects his people in times of trouble. Isn't that good to know? Are you in a time of trouble? Well, let him be good to you and expect him to do what he's promised here, to protect you in his time of trouble. If you are one of his people, if you know Jesus personally, this is your promise. He takes care of those who turn to him. All right, if that's if he takes care of me when I turn to him, I'm turning. I'm turning. I'm going now. I'm coming, Lord. I'm coming. Here I am. You know, just seriously, I mean it. Like, get after the turning, because then you can say, because you're going to take care of me as I turn to you. From the New Living Translation, the Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. Okay, I love this from this Old Testament book of Nahum, when trouble comes. The world sometimes will tell you, like, you know, there's a, there's a place where you can land in life where you just don't have that much trouble. That's not true. The Bible never sugarcoats or tries to pretty things up. The Bible is not telling you. God will never say to you, oh, you're not going to have any more trouble. He promises you peace in the midst of it, peace that passes all understanding. He promises you overwhelming victory in the book of Romans, but trouble still comes. We live in a fallen world. Things aren't running along according to God's original plan and design that we see all the way back in Genesis. What we find is just the issues of sin and flesh and just trouble, flat out trouble. But you know what? He's our refuge when trouble comes. He is close to those who trust in him. If you want to be close to the Lord and you want to feel like, if you ever have those moments where you're like, I don't know if the Lord is really, I just feel so far from him. I feel distant. Have I done something wrong? Um, Often it's just like a feeling and you haven't done anything wrong. But if you want to feel the closeness of the Lord to you, I encourage you to trust in him because this says he is close to those who trust in him. And you can even remind yourself of that. Oh, devil, you don't get to fool me today. You don't get to pull the wool over my eyes and try to tell me that I'm like, I'm not close to God, that I'm far from him, that he's walked away from me. That's not true because my Bible says he is close to those who trust in him. I trust in him fully. And you know what that means? He is close to me. So the devil is a liar. He always will be a liar. Rebuke him. You know, slay him with the sword of the word of of God, like hold up your shield of faith to extinguish all the fiery darts of the evil one of Satan. Just put him in his place. Remind him what the Bible really says. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The first part of that, though, says that you must submit to God. Submit to God. Trust him. In this case, here's your submission. I trust you, Lord. I trust you. Then resist the devil not listening to you, Satan. God is close to me and he's taking good care of me. And then the devil will flee from you. And you know what? That's like a turnaround. That's like a 180 moment when that happens. Okay, I'm going to read Psalm 117 from the New Living Translation. And uh, it's it's not a very long psalm, but man, it's a good one. It's a good one. So don't be panicky when you're like, she's going to read the whole thing. I sure am. It's really not long at all. You could open your Bible or pull it up on your phone and you'll probably go, oh, wow, that's a really short psalm. Sure is. Psalm 117, New Living Translation. And I will say this about it being a short psalm or a small thing. Like this is a good thing comes in small packages kind of a thing. Don't judge a book by its cover. This is not a psalm you want to just be like, well, it's so short. How can it be powerful? It is. It really is. There's a lot of hope here. There's a lot of promise here. Praise the Lord, all you nations. All means all. So God's end goal is for all of every, you know, everybody from every tongue and tribe and nation to praise him. That's his end goal. And one way or another, it's going to happen. We know that every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But for those of us who now, before that moment comes when everybody's going to hit their knees, like, we're in the in-between. It hasn't fully happened yet. When it happens, that's going to be amazing. But we have the benefit of praising him right now. So wherever you are in the world listening to this podcast, you are one among all the nations. And there are people who listen globally all around the world. Praise him. Let's be part of the corporate body of Christ that are praising the Lord. We are part of the all the nations praising the Lord. Praise him, all you people of the earth. What a beautiful moment it's going to be when all the people of the earth praise the Lord. I mean, I can't even fathom how amazing this will be. Okay, verse two, for his unfailing love for us is powerful. 
I'm going to say that again, for his unfailing, what kind of love for you? Unfailing, just unfailing, that's all. His unfailing love for us is powerful. The Lord's faithfulness endures forever. Praise the Lord. All right, it's a super short psalm, but is that second verse not amazing? God's unfailing love toward you is powerful. How can he not move and act in power when his love that's unfailing toward you is literally powerful? It can't be different. If he says it's powerful, it's powerful. Powerful love gets things accomplished that nothing else can get accomplished. It's the kind of love that took Jesus to the cross. And then, praise the Lord, we're about to roll up on and celebrate Resurrection Sunday. It That same power, that powerful love raised him from life and he defeated death and hell. Think about that. That's the kind of unfailing love that's powerful that God has for you. His faithfulness endures forever. What does that mean for you? That means whatever you're going through right now, whatever situation you're in, whatever hard thing you're up against, whatever you perceive is coming around the corner, whatever it is that's keeping you up at night, whatever it is, you know, that you keep getting that bill in the mail. I don't know what it might be, but listen, listen. The Lord's faithfulness endures forever. He's faithful in the way that he loves you. He's powerful in the way that he loves you. He's unfailing in the way that he loves you. It endures forever. You're never going to wear him out. You can keep coming to him and saying, this thing has me a little bit freaked out again today, Lord. Talk to him about it. Choose to trust him. Choose to trust him. Nahum 1-7. And just revel in his goodness and his grace and his mercy and glorify him in it, trust him through it and see what he does. You can trust him. Actually, as I read this, you must trust him. If you choose not to trust the God who has unfailing love that is powerful toward you, the Lord whose faithfulness endures forever, if you choose not to trust him, it's kind of like, like for shame, for pity's sake, that's really terrible. Just choose to trust him. He's telling you right here who he is, and based on who he is, how what kind of care is he going to take care of you? Totally, completely, beautifully, perfect, excellent care of you. From the Amplified, oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you people, for his loving kindness prevails over us, and we triumph and overcome through him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, I like it in the Amplified. I like it in the New Living Translation. I really like it in the Amplified. His loving kindness prevails over us. What do you feel like is like it's getting the best of you? There's something in your life that you feel like is prevailing over you right now. I've got a few things and they're pretty like they can, if I just focus on them, it's not good. It's not good. I'm going to be really, really down in the dumps. But when I think about verses like this, God's loving kindness prevails over me. Nothing else is prevailing over me. Nothing else is going to have the victory over me. Nothing is going to, and nothing else can win. The only thing that wins in my life, my life is God's loving kindness. It prevails over us and we triumph and overcome through him. You are never required or expected to overcome of your own volition and your own strength. You will overcome and you triumph through him, through the Lord. You always have help. You are never alone. And the truth of the Lord endures forever. So the New Living set, New Living Translation says his faithfulness endures forever. The Amplified says the truth of the Lord endures forever. Truth and faithfulness, they go together. He's faithful. He's telling you the truth in the word of God. He's telling you who he is. He's telling you the truth. Believe him. Believe him. Believe him. Don't stop believing him. That's actually all for today's episode, a shorter episode. Um, I have some, it's just a little bit of a busy season for me getting ready for a big event in a couple of weeks. And it's just been, there's just a lot of things that correspond with that event and other things going on that have just been keeping me busy, but it's, you know, it's good busy. It's good busy. And then just trying to keep moving forward at a pace that I can with my health during a busy season. Sometimes, and you know this, if you've ever struggled with health issues, sometimes you have to kind of guard things a little bit more, guard your time, have a little bit more of a boundary. Like there's only so much of an expenditure that can go out. And then it's like, "Mm, then I'm depleted, trying to watch that a little bit. So I have been a little bit more spread out on my episodes and some of them have been a little shorter that's okay. There's grace for me in that. And what does that mean for you? It means that wherever you're at in your life, if you need a little extra room, you need a little bit of an extra boundary, you need a little bit more space, some more margin 
so that you had more time to be with the Lord, to spend time in prayer, to hear what he would say to you and not feel like you're rushed, rushed, rushed all the time. You're allowed to need that. You're allowed to have that. God doesn't fault you for it. So learn a life, a lesson from my current circumstance. Take a little extra if you need a little extra. If God is saying, hey, come on, slow down a little bit so you can keep pace with me. It's a busy season. There's a lot going on. Where do you need to cut back so that you can slow down? Some of it's easy to figure out. Stop the scroll on social media. Just cut back on Netflix and other things are a little harder. I'm going to need to get up a little bit earlier to have that extra time. I need to figure out a way to go at a slower pace. Maybe for this season, I can't do this thing that I love to do, this chosen extra activity. I'm going to have to cut back on that for a month or so. That it may seem like, oh, I don't want to do any of those things, but it might be the best thing for you because then you've got room to just go with that slower pace, to be much with the Lord and not be rushed in your time with the Lord. The truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. His loving kindness prevails over you. You will triumph and overcome through him. His unfailing love for you is powerful and his faithfulness endures forever. What good news. What good news. I hope you have a blessed Easter. If I'm not back here with a new episode before then, I probably, I probably almost certainly will be, but I want to encourage you to just be thinking about just the things that really matter at some point in the next couple of weeks. Really take time to think about what Jesus accomplished for you personally on the cross because of his powerful, powerful love. He really is your stronghold. He is your strength, and he loves you so, so much. Isn't it great to be in the kingdom of God? And if there's somebody that you're really praying for that's not in the kingdom, they don't know Jesus, and you want them to come to know the Lord, set set aside some extra time to really pray, to really pray that this same God that we're talking about in Nahum 1.7 and in Psalm 117, that that God who makes such amazing promises would reveal himself, that that Christ would be revealed to that person right now, today, this very spring season, as we look forward to Resurrection Sunday. What better time to meet Jesus personally and your prayers for them. You may be the only one praying for them. So pray and keep praying, pray in belief, pray in faith, pray boldly, don't be afraid to ask God for big things in their life to get so that he can get a hold of them and move and act and accomplish his good and perfect and pleasing will, which is, you know, Jesus said, what is the work that we're to do to believe on the one whom the Father sent? That's Jesus. You be about doing that work. Pray for others to have Christ revealed to them. Really, I mean that. That's one of the most powerful prayers I've learned to pray for people who do not know the Lord that Christ would be revealed to them, that they would just really see and understand. That could be like a Saul on the road to Damascus kind of a moment. It could be one of a myriad of things. But when he reveals himself, wow, he does it in power. So pray and ask him to do that and just see what happens in the coming days and weeks in that person's life. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode today. As always, it's a pleasure to be with you, and uh, I will see you back here next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this episode that is part of the Spark Media Network that can now be heard on the Edify app. I'm so glad you joined me for this episode of the Burt Not Ernie Show. It's an honor and a blessing to talk about God's promises with you. Have a fabulous day. And remember, part of knowing who you are is knowing who you're not. Lord bless. I'll see you next time.